Hello and welcome to the third and last session of our do-it-yourself 3D printer design workshop here at SimScale. Today we will finish our journey through the world of 3D printer and computer-aided engineering. And before we start to talk about our today's topic, I would like to make sure that everybody can hear me loud and clearly. Therefore, please click on the raise your hand button in the case you can hear me. Great, I already see two, three, some hands. Seems like everything is working. And as you know, alternatively, you can also use our toll-free audio service numbers uh, to access the audio stream of this webinar. Uh, just use one of the uh, toll-free numbers you find on the slide and use the access code 9628078378. Well, let's take a look at our today's agenda. And during this session, we will talk about vibrations and investigate vibrations uh, of the frame of a RepRap 3D printer. And first of all, we will quickly talk a little bit about some fundamentals of um, frequency and harmonic analysis. We will talk about this two uh, simulation types which are very useful if you want uh, to understand like the transient behavior of your design. Uh, I have also prepared for today a live demonstration uh, where we will set up exactly such a simulation which is considering the vibrations uh, of the frame of a drone and just after that I will present your homework and we will have time for a Q&A. In the case you have questions you can ask them on the fly using the question box in the GoToWebinar control panel. I will try to answer the questions immediately or latest during the Q&A. Well, let's talk about some fundamentals for today. And first of all, I have prepared a slide where you can see actually four images representing uh, uh, different ways of how vi vibrations are used in technology and products. And what you can see, for example, is a pendulum clock, a swing, a guitar, and a kind of bridge, a bar. And if you t take a look at all these four pictures, they are all related somehow to vibrations and dynamics, ma machine dynamics. So let's start with the pendulum clock. There we lose the pendulum, which is um, oscillating with the defined frequency uh, to uh, measure the time. And basically what is happening is here is that uh, we start, this pendulum starts to swing and every time it, it's going through this zero position here, uh, it will move um, the clock. Or if we take a look at the swing, uh, it's a bit different because there actually the energy uh, is uh, introduced to the system by the person who rides the swing. And another good example is the guitar. Actually, when you play the guitar and you hit the string, the string starts to vibrate and then there I have a resonance effect with the surrounding air or the air inside the guitar. And in the end, the sound you hear uh, has the same frequency uh, like the eigenfrequency of the string. And we'll call about eigenfrequencies just in some seconds more in detail. Or the last and maybe most famous example is the steel bar or it could also be a bridge. And if you just think about it, um, uh, you might saw this video, it's quite famous, of a group of soldiers marching on a bridge and then this bridge is collapsing. And the reason is because they are exactly marching with the frequency, eigenfrequency of uh, the bridge. So um, basically there are two kind of analyzers we can perform, two type of simulations. One is called frequency analyzers, and this kind of simulation gives you back the uh, eigenfrequencies and eigenmodes of the object you want to investigate. So in the case of uh, our bridge, for example, the frequency simulation will give us back those frequencies uh, which are uh, amplified, or which will amplify the self. That's maybe a better uh, explanation. And every body has his eigenfrequencies or eigenfrequencies and related eigenmodes. But these eigenfrequencies are only depending, let's say, on the design and the materials of your um, uh, product 
of your object you want to investigate and they are not depending on the boundary conditions on the loads. So if you go back on the example of the bridge, the eigenfrequencies of the bridge are independent from who is walking on it or how many people are walking on it. It's something like a property, a natural property of the bridge. And based on this we can do something which we call harmonic analysis. And harmonic analysis is some, somehow the opposite of frequency analysis. It gives you back the physical reactions through the application of periodic oscillations. And combining these two simulations can help us to massively improve our products and also improve 3D printers. Because the frequency analysis will give us eigenfrequencies which will be amp uh, self-amplified. We can now use these eigenfrequencies and do a harmonic analysis investigating the physical reaction of our design through the application of a periodic oscillation uh, which has the same frequency like the eigenfrequency. And these two steps helps us to understand the, let's say, uh, modal behavior of, of all the parts we want to investigate. And that's what we actually want to do today. We want to perform such a simulation. And therefore we have prepared an assembly of a 3D printer, this is a little bit simplified. And now we will apply FEA simulation, two kinds of simulation, to investigate uh, for which frequencies uh, we have, uh, for example, a lot of vibrations. And you might ask yourself why we need the simulation. And if you think about it, um, we have a lot of moving and rotating parts inside the 3D printer. We have the stepping engines, uh, we have the belts, and all these parts are adding, oscill uh, are adding uh, uh, oscillations and vibrations to the frame. And we want now to understand if there is some case where, for example, because of the match of the eigenfrequency of the uh, printer and the frequency of the step engine, it could happen that you have strong vibrations. And this is something we want to avoid, because imagine if you have vibrations, this will negatively impact the result of your printer. And so, again, like the last two weeks, we have three steps. First of all, we have to prepare the geometry for the simulation, so we have to create a mesh. Based on this mesh, we, have then to, we can then set up the simulation, and then we'll do the post-processing. And this time, we're going to do like a loop. So we will use the same mesh for both analyzers, and then we will do a, a second run using the uh, eigenfrequencies as the input. In the first step, let's take a look at the geometry. I have prepared again a project including uh, everything we need in this case, the geometry of the 3D printer assembly. Here we can see it. And as you can see, this model was massively simplified. So um, basically, uh, what we, we kept the rods and all the other parts, as you can see, were defeatured. So if you take a look, for example, at the extruder, everything was merged into one part, re removed a lot of holes, screws, and, and small faces. Um, and the reason is that for this kind of analysis, for this uh, harmonic analysis and frequency analysis we want to perform, um, we actually don't need a very high level of detailness with regard to the geometry. And as you can see, this model, uh, we have like for every rod a single volume and every part is the own volume which we can select and deselect. Okay, so let's start to create the mesh. We click on the Create a new mesh button and first of all we have to assign the geometry. And once this is finished, this can take up to two or three seconds, we will add a new mesh operation. And uh, again we are doing a uh, uh, FEA simulation like in the first session, so we can only use the TED dominant measure. We'll use automatic mesh sizing, a mesh finals level of 2 cores is fine. Uh, basically we can keep all the standard settings and then we just have to click on start. In this case we don't need uh, any specific refinements um, since it's a very large assembly, the automatic matching should be fine and since this model was defeatured uh, also, um, this should also help to improve the mesh quality also for our automatic core mesh. And this meshing can take some time and therefore I have uh, prepared another project. 
So let's take a look at the finalized mesh. And as I mentioned, we exactly use the same settings for meshing. So let's take a look at the mesh operation and you will see that we also use the uh, coarse mesh, coarse automatic mesh. And another thing which is very important is that we kept all these different volumes of the geometry, which we will later use uh, and we will assign every one which it each individual material properties and damping properties and so on. So um, first of all we have to wait until the mesh is loaded. In the meantime maybe let's check out one thing. We can also investigate the mesh size. Alter, warum stützt das so ab? So we have at least 600,000 elements, which is a lot. Uh, you can see the mesh here right now. It's it's not a very, actually not a very, very fine mesh, but since we have the full assembly, we have a quite high element count. And uh, so here let's take a look at the mesh. As you can see, uh, we have automatic refinement, for example, here in the near of, of contacts and also automatic mesh sizing based on the overall size of the of the geometry. For example, here for the bed, we have much larger elements than for the small rods. So um, let's now take a look inside the mesh. And therefore we will use the mesh clip, uh, mesh clip filter, which will create a cut through the mesh. And we can define this clipping uh, plane by uh, given reference point and a normal. So let's change the normal to that and then we can for example clip. Click on apply and this can take some seconds since the whole mesh needs to be cut it on our cl uh, cloud hardware and then the results needs to be transferred back to your computer. So let's uh, take a look uh, at our wrap-up slide. So what did we learn so far? First of all, uh, like for every simulation project, we are starting with the geometry and uh, in this case, since we want to do FEA simulation, we can only use TAT dominant meshing. And since this is a larger assembly and we want to perform harmonic and frequency analysis, it's not necessary to do manual meshing and we used automatic meshing with the coarse mesh and the first order mesh. And again, there are some things we cannot talk about. And the first thing is cat cleaning and repair. You may notice I've talked about this issue uh, basically every time. And the reason is that um, this has a really big influence. And this is a very good example. As I mentioned, this was mo model was featured massively. And this is something you have to do every time you want to create a simulation of your own cat design or cat model. And for sure also there are some manual meshing options, so if you want to get deeper insights and increase the accuracy more, it can become necessary um, to uh, really add some manual mesh refinements. Now let's switch back to our mesh and the clip is already calculated and now we can take a look inside the mesh. And here you can for example see the automatic refinement here. Yes, and now let's start to set up the actual simulation. Therefore, we will switch to the simulation designer and create a new simulation. Click on the new simulation button. Let's call this one frequency since it's the first step of frequency analysis. And then you have to choose the, the, f the analysis type you want to use. And we want to use frequency analysis, so click here on save. And now everything will be added to our um, simulation tree on the left side. And first of all we have to specify which mesh we want to use for our simulation. So let's select the mesh we've just created, click on save and the mesh will be added also to this um, uh, project tree, simulation tree. And uh, if you think about it, what we did so the, at the first session, then we also had assembly and we needed to define contacts. In this case we can uh, we can. Uh, we are not uh, forced to create contacts since the contacts are already predefined in the CAD model. And this sounds might strange to you. So what does it mean? As you know, we need those contacts to define their interaction between several bodies. 
and some cat tools and some cat formats support implicit definition of contacts and in this case we use the so-called brep file format which is the file format used by open cascade and some other tools and if you use this brep files uh, you can define contacts implicit and what does it mean or let's take a look at the cat model and then you will see what i what i mean um, so if we go back on the geometry then you can see that this cat model has a dedicated structure and which we can call or which i would call it's an approach of shared faces so let's take a look at solid zero which is this engine here this dummy for the engine and if we open expand this tree here you can see that basically there is one face inside which does not belong to solid two but to solid at uh, solid zero but to solid two and if we hide solid zero and highlight solid two we can see that it's that face of the neighboring part basically the face which is shared for the contact and if your model is looking like this you can be sure that the contact were implicit, uh, implicit defined and imported and you don't need to define the contacts on your own but be careful if there is any problem with the contact definition inside the cat model this problem will also be uh, in your simulation and so you have to really make sure that the contacts are defined correctly so we can uh, we don't need to define the contacts the next step is to define the materials and as i mentioned we have some different materials or different parts from different materials in this model and to simplify it and make it not too complex we decided to use only three materials and replace some parts by dummies for example these engines are made of parts of steel uh, cooper etc and we will just replace it with a dummy material because this is uh, accurate enough for us and will reduce our work so let's start with the rods and therefore we will import a material model of steel just click on save then it's imported and now we can start to select everything i will change the representation render mode from surfaces with edges to surfaces only and now let's start to select them you can select them directly in the model but also from this list here or from uh, the list on the right side the, the, the um, tree on the right side so we have solid three solid six solid seven solid eleven twelve fourteen fifteen eighteen nineteen twenty twenty two and twenty four 23 not sorry not 22 all right now click on add selection from viewer and we can save it and now we have assigned steel to all rods the next material we have to define is similar to steel but with a little bit lower density it's this dummy material we use for the step edges for example so let's again import a material from the library let's choose again steel but now we will change the density to 4657 and now we will apply it to the dummies of the engine 17 and finally 29 add selection from view and let's call it click on save and now we can define the final missing material which is ABS we can import it from our material library and then add it to the remaining parts 1 2 4 8 9 10 13 
Now we are nearly done. Just one thing or two things are missing. First of all, we need to define the boundary condition and only a constraint. That's a very important difference. Actually, forces, etc., have no influence on the result of your harmonic analysis, only the constraints. And in this case, we'll change selection mode to faces and pick this lower faces where the printer actually stands on. So let's select them. We are done. The only thing which is missing is simulation control settings, so we will use 8 cores since we have this large mesh. And everything else can we can use the default settings, so we want to investigate the first hand eigen frequency starting from 0 Hz to upper limit of 100,000 Hz. Now finally we just need to create a new simulation job. You can ignore this warning. And then we go. Yes, and after 5 to 10 minutes, the simulation is finished. And again, we have prepared a project which includes the final simulation results. And uh, the first thing, maybe, which comes into your mind is that we have no uh, more convergence plot. And uh, that's true. Uh, harmonic analysis frequency analysis is working a little bit different and so let's take a look at the results and basically we don't need to take a look into the uh, 3D simulation results we basically just need this so-called eigenfrequency plot and here on this plot you can see the first 10 eigen mode and related eigenfrequencies which were calculated so the first one is at 26.8335 Hz the second one is on 55.19866 Hz and so on. And we also have eigenfrequency frequency table, so it's basically the same kind of information, just a different way of, of visualizing them. So here we can also copy the values if we are interested in them. And there's some other deri derivated things calcul uh, which were based calculated based on that. For example, here we can see the the effective modal mass translation in all directions for all eigen modes. So at the first eigen mode, you can see basically in all directions quite low, and for the second one, it's a there's a high peak for X translation, while the first one there's a high peak for Z translation, and so on. And there is also a 3D visualization of the eigen modes. If you click on this eigen modes uh, field here, you can visualize them. But basically all we need for our next steps is included in this eigenfrequency table. And we will now set up a harmonic analysis based on this eigen modes and calculate what happens if we uh, have uh, external load on this assembly at the at the eigenfrequency. So this is like the 3D visualization just need some time to load the f all the results six we have since we have 600,000 elements but then we can visualize the different eigen modes right and now as the next step we have to prepare this frequency analysis as this harmonic analysis sorry So let's go back to Simulation Designer. And I have already prepared something. This is basically um, an equal project. The only difference is we use harmonic analysis, not frequency analysis. Again, we don't have to define contacts, but materials. Uh, f for Again, we use the same um, kind of material, so steel rods, ABS, and steel motors. And the only difference is that now we also have to add damping coefficients. And damping is like, uh, in the end of the day, uh, damping is, is, is similar to friction. It's a way of, of uh, converting energy. 
and damping is dissipating the kinetic energy of our system. And this damping coefficients are a way to describe how the damping properties of the materials are. We also have uh, other damping um, models, like hysteric damping, and we have to define it for all materials, for the steel rods, for the ABS, and for the steel motors. And then the other difference is that we have to add an additional load. And in this case, we will create or add a load to the extruder block. So let's change this to surface. So, and it will be a force in y direction. Minus 4000.5. This all is fine, and we will add it to to this surface here. Change it again. Sorry, wait one second. I have to select this face as uh, the volume to hide it. And now we can select all the faces we want to select. And we can also do it graphically uh, uh, using the list. And one trick is if you don't know which face it is, you can just first of all find out which volume we are talking about. And then you can directly selected. And in our case it's 616 and phase 653. Safe. And now it's assigned. And one thing which is missing is we have to add the simulation control here. So here we have to define for which frequencies we want to investigate this and the number of calls we want to use as well as the maximum runtime. Finally, we will add some result control items to understand the results and especially what we will add is so-called point data. And we will now like calculate for different points how they will move on the oscillating load. So let's start with point 1 in x direction. We can, for example, say we want a frequency response of displacement, and then we can even say which component should be calculated. We can say a real imaginary part or magnitude and phase, and then we have to add the geometric primitive or geometry primitive we want to investigate, and in this case we can just define a new point. Click on save. And then you can just enter, for example, for this point and now we have here a point. And we can do this also for other points and other directions. 
Right, and while everything is defined, check the simulation. One thing we should maybe change is the time step. But everything else is fine. And we can just create a new simulation run. Yes. And this simulation will take some more time. So again, we have prepared a project including um, the finished results. First of all, let's do a quick wrap up what we have learned so far. So we talked about the general setup. And again, remember, basically we're performing two simulations. The first simulation is the frequency simulation, which will give us back the input for the second simulation. And we have to decide the wrong solver type assign the mesh, contacts are defined implicit, so there is no need to define them. And basically the only thing which is left is define the material, the boundary condition and start the simulation. Especially for frequency simulation, harmonic simulations, there are a lot of uh, tricks you can like try to leverage uh, better numerical solver settings for your simulation. And there are also some tricks for advanced solver setting like result control items or stuff like that. But this is something we will not talk about today. So let's um, take back, take a look. So the simulation uh, should be finished. Let's check it out. Yes, 100%. It took 40 minutes. And again, we don't have a convergence plot since it's not an iterative approach. But we can check out the log if we want. And now let's take a look at some of the results. So, first of all, I have prepared and added some additional points which were investigated. For example, the displacement magnitude for the point 1 and x direction for different frequencies. And here you can see like that there is basically no displacement for low frequencies till 40 Hz. But then it becomes hard, and especially between 102 and 110 Hz, it's really a, lo a lot of displacement, up to 2 centimeters, compared to nothing at low frequencies. And we can also take a look at the three-dimensional solution field. Loading th this data set can take a few more moments, uh, as we can see, since it's a quite large data set. And um, but basically, if you are developing a printer, I would say the 2D plots are m much more valuable uh, than three-dimensional images of the solution field. And um, yes, in the meantime, until this loads, this can take up to two or three minutes. Let's take a look at some results I have prepared. So, yes, uh, I showed you during the simulation setup how to define the three con result control items. And we have taken a deeper look at two result control items uh, for two points. The first point is this point one, which I already created. And it's this long distance point of the system. And that's the reason why you use it. And the other point we'll take a look at is point two, which is at the extruder tip. And this is the place where material is added, so if we have large uh, displacements there, it will have a highly negative effect on the print result. So these are the results for point 1 in x-direction. Uh, and we can see magnitude and phase angle um, versus frequency. And the first thing we see is, see is that like we have a phase angle of nearly 180 degrees for low frequency. And 180 degrees is like a half period. So, uh, with a phase difference of, of a half oscillation. And what we can see is, as I mentioned, for low frequencies up to 30, 40 Hz, there is normally no influence. But if we have higher frequencies, we have this kind of peak here. And especially for 100 to 110 uh, Hz, we have a massive uh, displacement in x direction of the point 1, while the um, uh, phase angle is also changing. And what is interesting now is uh, our operating range is between z 0 and 150 Hz, what we estimate. But if we have a higher frequency,
frequencies which could occur, we should also increase uh, the analysis because it seems that something is happening. Yeah, I mean, it's dropping again. And now the question is, is this like a local high and it will then go down again or will it stay as, as, as high as it is? And we did the same thing for point four, uh, point 0.2, sorry, not point 0.4, which is at the extruded. Uh, uh, here you can see basically the same for low frequencies, there is no displacement, but then it starts to increase, especially again for this area around 100 Hz. And for the phase angle, it's exactly the other way around. So we start without any phase angle and then it goes up to nearly 180 degrees. And we did the same for that. There is again the other way around. So we are starting again with a, a phase angle of nearly 180 degrees. And what is very interesting here, f uh, for that direction, it's much more sensitive regarding uh, these oscillations. Even for low frequencies, we have a high displacement up to 1.5 millimeters and becomes low again and is very low around 70 hertz. And then we have these two peaks here, here and here. Great, before we take a look at the homework and the question, let me show you some live post-processing. So this is a simulation result. And first of all, what we can see here is acceleration. Let's change it to displacement. Which is a real component of displacement. And now we can also add, if we want, a wrap vector filter. Change it from acceleration to displacement real is very important to choose real and now if we change this to solid you should be able to see a difference so gray is the initial like position of the printer and then you can see like for the maximum frequency which high displacement we can have. But this is outside of our standard operating uh, boundaries. All right, now I would like to introduce your homework to you. So your job for this week is, exactly to, is uh, to perform exactly the simulation I showed you. So you have to create a mesh create a uh, frequency analysis and based on this a harmonic analysis. We will not use a parametric model this week so we will again provide you with a project including the CAT model and step-by-step -step instructions you can find on our website. Great. And it seems like my uh, colleague uh, were quite active during the session and answered nearly all of your questions. And since there are no questions anymore, I would like to thank you for being here with us. It was a great journey. I hope you stay active at the SimScale community. And if you need help, just reach out to me or my colleagues using our forum. Thank you very much and have a nice day. See you soon. Bye.